Hi there guys and welcome once again to Jonesy's vlog and a brand new camera so hopefully uh, the quality is going to be uh, a little bit better than what it has been on the, on my previous webcam and uh, and the last camera that I had as well so uh, fingers crossed for that anyway it's been uh, it's been a little while since I last spoke to you about uh, Leeds United and sure enough as I thought quite a lot of stuff has happened <laughs> um, it was uh, it was never going to be a quiet uh, sort of off season period was it um, so where to start then really uh, so so much has happened um, you know Chilino's really sort of started the big change at the club I suppose uh, I suppose it all well I'm not really going to go through this real chronological order or anything I'm just going to because there's so much to talk about um, you know first of all the, the retained list and the players that, that will leave in the club you know, no real surprises there, you know, Michael Browns, Jamie Ashdowns, Danny Pews, um, you know, players like that, that you were, you know, expecting to, to, to leave, really. Um, I might, on the off chance, maybe have kept Danny Pugh just as a decent replacement at left-back, but then again, uh, you know, Charlie Taylor seems to be coming through and he's just signed a new contract, uh, and obviously Stephen Walnut's still there at the club, so uh, so you know no big deals there, and definitely no no upsets or anything. Uh, you know Vani and Juve going as well, so um, no disappointment from me there anyway. But the retain list wasn't done or chosen by McDermott. It was uh, spoken through and uh, and sort of done between Chilino, Neil Redfern, and Benito Carboni uh, because McDermott doesn't seem to be, well we don't know where he is, um, Chilino came out and, and asked where's Brian and uh, he seemed to suggest that he was on holiday and that he sort of hadn't told him where he was going or anything but then either McDermott or someone from the McDermott camp says that he's um, he's down south with uh, family members because his, his mum's ill so I mean, no one knows, you know, what's going on there, but, you know, nothing has been heard of McDermott recently. You know, he certainly hasn't sort of come out and said anything. He hasn't made any comments about the players that are going to be leaving the club or, you know, anything about the summer, really. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it it just seems like that really awkward thing of... It doesn't seem like he's going to be the manager or that he's going to start the season as Leeds United manager. But if that is going to be the case, then I just wish Chilino would sort of get it done with now. And instead of letting this sort of go on and on and on, because um, it just seems like the relationship between those two, if it was to go into the summer and they started building the team up, if there's going to be a fraction between those two, then you can't see anything really working out properly. Um, so that's a little bit of a worry, you know. I'd quite like to see, well, I'm sure everyone would quite like to see, you know, something get sorted. Either he come out and say, McDermott is going to be coach or manager and that there's not going to be a problem offering him to come out and say that you know we don't want him as manager anymore so yeah McDermott's missing and as I mentioned just before there Benito Carboni's at the club as a was it a footballing consultant or something um, you know someone who apparently is going to be helping with uh, first team uh, responsibilities and uh, the academy uh, apparently him and Redfern and everything have been been working together as I mentioned you know he helped with the retained list uh, he's been talking a lot about the youth at the club um, and he maintains that he's definitely not going to become the manager so it, I find it a weird one it, I, fa I, I can't find myself giving a sort of definitive answer on quite a lot of things that have happened so far and, and Carboni is one of them I don't know whether to feel glad that he's at the club because he it's not got much experience. Uh, I think he's only been working at a very, very lower league uh, Italian club. I think from from what I've seen. Um, so you know, not much experience from from that side of things. But you know, he, he's been in football long enough to to know the game and everything. And you know, because I don't know that much about him since he you know left playing football. You know, I, I remember him being a, a fantastic player for Sheffield Wednesday, for Bradford, for Aston Villa, and play, uh, teams like that. Um, so you know he's been there and done it but after that I, he just disappeared so it's hard to give an opinion on, on someone like that when you don't really know too much about them so yeah that's uh, that's Carboni um, of course there was the thing about Thor Parch uh, Chilino keeps going on about how you know that the costs are so much at the club and uh, 
uh, you know, cuts need to be made. So one of these decisions was to close Thor Park throughout the summer, which, you know, I suppose it does make sense in a way if it's costing so much money, and you know, no one is necessarily going to be there using it apart from maybe the the younger players, um, which you know it is a shame for them. But if it does, you know, we do need to cut costs down somewhere, and if that's one of the ways of doing it, then you know, so be it. Um, there was talk of him over the last few days that you know things are so high that he may close it down altogether and think about maybe using one of the the university training facilities, which um, would be odd. You know, we we have such a fan. You know, everything is always said so much about Thor Patch, about how many players it's helped. You know, bring through and how it's all state of the art facilities and everything. So you know, it would be a shame to lose something. You know, it's such an asset to the club. But uh, I, I, get, I get the feeling that he won't close it, you know, and, and move away from it. I think it's uh, just one of his tactics and, you know, some of those over-the-top things that he uh, that he talks about in interviews. So hopefully that won't be the case with, uh, with Thorpe Arch. Uh, and then, of course, there was the thing about making players report back um, early for, for training, which was it initially, I think he said 28th of March. Uh, I may be wrong with that. Uh, but I think that's been extended to the 2nd of June now. Um, so there seems to be, well, nothing really too much made of that, but then Ross McCormack came out on Twitter and kind of made it clear that he wasn't happy with it because he was going to be training with Scotland and then he was going to be coming straight back to Leeds training like the very next day or something. And, um, you know, he's been sending out a lot of tweets, Ross McCormack, and you can, it's clear to see that he's not happy with some of the things that are going on behind the scenes. And, you know, a lot of people are reading even extra into it, saying, you know, he's trying to force a move out of Leeds United and, and this and that. Uh, you know, as you can, you know, believe, Twitter has been a awful place to be over the last few weeks. Uh, I haven't really been sort of on there too much because uh, I've just not wanted to be involved in it, really. I've just, I'm, at the moment, I'm wanting to see how everything goes. Uh, I'm trying to restrain my judgment on the majority of things that are happening till you know closer to the season and see how things are going then um, you know it's not some of the things that are happening I can't say I 100% agree with but you know at the end of the day Cellino has a lot more experience in football than I do uh, a lot more experience in business than I do so I feel like you know I want to question some of the things that he's doing but at the end of the day, he probably knows better than I do. So I'm kind of leaving it at that um, sort of at the moment with some of the decisions. So, you know, the, the decision to bring the players back early for, for training, I can see why he wants to do that. You know, it's not like they're going to be coming back early and straight on that very first day going to be back in, you know, hard training. Uh, you know, it's, it's I suppose he's wanting to bring everyone together again, maybe. Uh, you know, maybe a bit of light training here and there, doing a lot more talking and discussions about, you know, certain things. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen, but, you know, some people have it in the mind that it's going to be straight back in to, to full-on training straight away, which I can't imagine that would be the case. And staying on the theme of sort of players having to go and moaning a little bit, um, it was kind of accepted for a while that Jamie Ashdown was probably going to be leaving the club um, you know, it's a big, a big shame for for, for Ashdown. You know, he he's clearly a very good keeper. Uh, I always thought it was a really good backup for Kenny, and, and in some circumstances, he might have been slightly better. And I think he he would have been a great goalkeeper to to have as backup uh, at the club. But obviously, the injuries that he's had, uh, you know, he's been out for so long. It was it was never going to work out for him, unfortunately. And and that's that's how it's happened. It was always accepted that he was going to leave. But he uh, he came out and said that he heard or found out on Twitter or sort of through the release of this retain list he heard it on there first and then got his letter afterwards um, announcing that he, he was to you know no longer wanted by the club and you know he, he felt he deserved you know a little bit more respect than that and and I agree with him you know we had a, there were tons of people on Twitter saying you know Oh, you know, we we have to put up with that in real life, and you know, you'll be fine getting another job or anything. You know, people in the real world that don't, you know, have worse problems than you. But, but it's not, you know, at the end of the day, that's still the job that he's doing. 
it doesn't matter that he's on you know more money than sort of what me and you would be on or that he's a footballer and he's doing a dream job and everything at the end of the day that's still a job and he deserves to be treated the way that you would expect to be treated so to sort of find out that you've you're not going to be part of the club any longer even if it was sort of generally accepted that he wasn't anyway still to find out over the internet rather than you know being told face to face or over the phone before that you know that's not right and you know I don't blame him for sort of coming on Twitter and having a go you know about that you know I think I'd be pretty pretty pissed off in uh, in that circumstance so uh, so there was that as well Ian Hart the other night uh, sent out a tweet saying something like uh, if only Leeds fans knew what was happening uh, behind the scenes or something it's an absolute shambles so I mean we know that he's good mates with Brian McDermott so obviously it must have something to do with that he's friends with Noel Hunt so maybe he's been passing something on uh, in, in a way that that was disappointing because obviously he's not going to come out and say what he was talking about so you know all that does is just get Leeds fans it get it gets the backs up it creates more you know unnecessary kind of negativeness sort of on the internet and you know we're wanting to know what's happening you know behind the scenes at our club so for for an next player like that to sort of come on and say something like that and not tell us what it is you know that was slightly annoying um and it, it does get you thinking and wondering well what is going on um you know behind closed doors kind of thing so um, yeah, overall really so far since the season's ended, as it always is, Twitter has not been a fun place to be. So changes have been made at uh, sort of the board level and director level, uh, you know, I think Cellino and his two sons um, are, now, are now classed as directors I think, um, and there was uh, another guy, was it Artie or something? I don't even know who he is. Um, but yeah, I, I'm confused as to why his sons have been uh, chosen as directors. I mean, I suppose we shouldn't be surprised and we knew it should happen, but I mean, Eduardo Cellino is be, again, has been on Twitter a lot and saying so many things. And I mean, to be honest, I personally don't like him. Uh, I think he, he comes across as, you know, one of these daddy boys that clearly likes, likes getting his dad's money and spending it and everything. And a lot of the things he's been saying on Twitter have been quite sort of disrespectful to either players or people that have been at the club, you know, not acknowledging that Brian McDermott is manager and things like that and that we're getting new players and sort of just teasing the fans in the way as well, you know, so many questions are asked to him and he kind of gives teasing answers and it's just not the right and correct way to go about things. So the fact that he's doing that and being quite unprofessional, the fact that he's, he's like one of the directors now, Again, just puts little bits of doubt in in the mind, uh, and you know these this is, these are the things that are kind of annoying me a lot um, at the moment. Again, I'm sure Massimo Cellino knows what he's doing, um, and like I said, I am reserving judgment just for now. But um, you know that that does bother me uh, a little bit. You know, I can't I can't deny that. So there's been changes there, and changes elsewhere in the club as well. Paul Jews uh, left. Uh, earlier this week, I actually must have missed it the actual day that it happened. It was only yes, was it yesterday or the day before uh, that I learnt that he'd left, and that's disappointing because by all accounts he was, you know, one of the best um, at his job, and uh, you know we even had Henry Winter the other day tweeting, you know, saying it was a shame that that Juzzi had left the club, you know, because it was always. Always a pleasure to deal with him when sorting out press conferences and you know working with the media at, at Ellen Road and Leeds United. Uh, and you know he was Leeds United through and through. Paul Jews, you know, you could see from uh, you know things that he said about the club and, and being on Twitter. You know, he he loved Leeds United. The you know before when he worked at the Yorkshire Evening Post. You know to get that job, we you know pretty much a dream job for him at the club. Again, he was good at his job. So why he's left? I don't know, I mean, I might have missed something for a genuine reason for it, uh, but obviously something's, you know, actually no ringing the changes. And and with that also, Don Matteo has left as his uh, ambassadorial role, and it probably seems that, you know, Peter Lorimer and Eddie Gray probably won't be too far behind. Uh, this is all meant to be part of the cost-cutting thing that, that Chileno keeps talking about. 
and I suppose if it does save the club money then maybe it's for the best but I think it's it's always so important to keep you know your club legends around the club like that um, and to have those ambassadorial roles really does help so like I say I wait I wait to see how things go until I sort of give it a definitive kind of uh, judgment to that uh, but it is a shame and I think a lot of fans uh, kind of showed that yesterday on the on Twitter when it was announced that Matteo was going and if things couldn't get any weirder uh, <laughs> was it yesterday or the day before it was yesterday it's revealed that David Haig uh, whilst over in Dubai has has been jailed for fraud and embezzlement so again I mean yes you know he's left the club it's not to do with the club anymore but you know it's meant to be all about it's it's happened during his time at the club and it seems very much like it may have been set up by GFH uh, I mean no one really knows the ins and outs of this and the real details so uh, you know I can't really go into much detail about it but you know it just adds something else to uh, to the circus that is Leeds United um, it's like I say I mean it's only what is it three weeks now since the season ended and uh, it just hasn't quietened down really has it and then today the club announced that they uh, they could no longer take uh, credit or debit card um, transactions for season ticket uh, renewals and for season ticket buying because of this winding up petition or whatever it is from uh, from that Spark Capital group uh, it, they say it's out of their hands and there's nothing they can particularly do about it but um, you know even though there are other options available it's obviously going to have caused some kind of um, you know problems for some fans so like I say it's been pretty much every single day there's been something new you know coming out from the club um, even if it's just little tiny things so you know as the title says you know the circus just you know it uh, it definitely doesn't want to leave Leeds United at the moment and you know I, although I don't want you know it's always good to have some kind of news coming from the club but I just hope from now on it can be something more positive and we can just start looking forward to to next season a bit more because whilst all this is going ahead and no one knows who the manager's going to be and what players are going to be here and not uh, players coming in etc it still had to sort of relax you know about it you know people are getting are getting restless on twitter because the, they haven't revealed the, the new home strip for next season so you know that that's how bad it's getting out there so um so yeah I think I've caught up on nearly everything there. You know, if I've missed something out, then then do let me know in the comments uh, comments below because I probably have. So yeah, I think that's all I've got to say uh, to say right now, guys. Another quick reminder: uh, I probably do uh, a separate, very small video just to announce it. But I'm going to be recording my Q and A vlog next Sunday, which is the third. Uh, no, that's the first of June. Um, so you've got until the 1st of June to get your questions into me. Uh, I've already got quite a few in, uh, which could probably make a, a decent small video, but I want to get as many questions in as I can and make a really decent quality video out of it. And remember, you know, obviously I know it's going to be more Leeds United based than anything, but it doesn't have to be Leeds United based, you know, it can be football based in general, you know, obviously the World Cup's just around the corner. You know, if you want to ask me about that or England, then do so. If you want to ask me about other different sports, you know, you know what sports are like. I'm into my rugby league, my cricket, snooker, things like that. Or uh, just anything that isn't sport based, you know, things in general, things about music, food, you know, what I do in my spare time, TV shows, etc. You know, there's no limit to what I want you to ask, guys. You know, the more the more variety, the better for me, really. So, you know, don't just feel like you have to stick to Leeds United and don't feel like you can only ask one question, you know, ask as many questions as you like. Um, I've been asking people to, to leave the questions either in the comments below or on my Twitter. Uh, to be honest, now I think I'd find it easier if you, you did definitely send it to me on Twitter, either in a, in a message or in a, um, or in a tweet. Uh, just because sometimes I don't always get the comments through um, on YouTube. I'm, I'm pretty crap at kind of reading them sometimes. And they don't always come through as well, which is a bit annoying. So, yeah, I'm going to say just send me questions to my Twitter, which is at Chris Jones LUFC. And like I say, either do that through a tweet or you can direct message me as well if you don't want it to be seen public or whatever. Um, people have already done that so far. So I'm noting them all down, guys. So like I say, June the 1st, which is uh, next Sunday, I'm going to be recording that Q&A vlog. So get your questions in now, guys. So, yeah, um, leave your thoughts and um, 
comments below on what I've been saying today. Uh, you know, how you feel the past few weeks have gone. Uh, and if you see any light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, do that below at the comments or again at my Twitter at Chris Jones, L-U-F-C. As always, thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you all very soon.